So growing up, going to the mailbox and getting the mail for my parents, there wasn't much to look forward to. However, on occasion, we would get this, the Griot's Garage Catalog. Now in my own house, I still don't like getting the mail, but I do like seeing this when I open the mail. And uh, we're we've taken a little road trip. We're actually here in Tacoma, Washington. If you take a look behind me, this beautiful 356 that's coming out of the ground, don't worry, it's not a real 356. They wouldn't do that to a 356. But um, just to give you an idea of how important Porsches are to Grio's garage. We're gonna take a little tour. Let's head on inside. So here we are, like a kid in a candy store. I'm gonna be a little quiet because there are actually customers in the, in the showroom now. But look around, look at all the products that you've probably seen in the catalog here for you to try out, for you to learn. What I just learned earlier was all of the, uh, I guess, spray or liquid um, products that are under the Griot's Garage name, they're all made in the US. They're made, I believe, out in Indianapolis. And they're their own formula. Uh, there's other companies out there that I guess can buy certain liquids, formulas, and repackage it. But Griot's Garage actually has chemists on board. They test and do trials and this is all unique formulations that they've created. So anything from detailing your car, uh, your detailing needs of car wash liquid, spray on waxes, it's all right here. Those of you that are fortunate enough to have a garage or a garage that you can hang things or have some equipment, of course, you've probably recognized a lot of the garage parts and equipment that Griot's offers. Here we have some tools that uh, Griot's Garage has decided that they would stand by, so to speak, and offer uh, to their customers. Now this is a pretty cool area. This is actually their sort of education training room where customers can bring their cars in and they'll have experts that will come and show you exactly how to use their products on your cars. It's a full-on detail garage. Here, everything that you need. So let's keep walking. Again, more Porsche details. I'm gonna have Damon spin around, take a look up on the wall, the artwork there, the various 911s, 356s. So this is another area where, uh, when they have different uh, car events, displays. Right now they have these classic cars for the holidays and they change up the inventory in here based on what's going on. And what cool car place would be complete if it didn't have its own cafe? And I've got a little secret access there. Bring in. 50s diner, kitchenette setup again, to host all the car enthusiasts that come through. This is a pretty special wall. I believe it started in 1990, the very first catalog up on the top left. And I believe this series here goes to about 270 or so issues. And the latest issue that they've uh, released, I believe was about 450, 460th issue. All right, so usually the tour stops here for most people, because of course you wouldn't cross here. However, for us today, we're gonna cross the line. And again, we have a special access key and we're gonna take you behind the scenes. Richard Griot, the owner and founder of Griot's Garage, and um, you're in my personal uh, uh, garage where we restore cars, work on cars, test car care products on these cars, and um, just a little bit of the collection today. So, really excited to, for you to join me. So, you might ask, you know, why do I love Porsches? And, and so, Porsches have been a part of my life since I can ever remember. I grew up in Southern California, so I actually saw a lot of them. 
instead of reading my English books, I was looking at the Los Angeles Times to see if there was any cheap Porsches. There weren't for a 14-year-old, so I ended up with a uh, Jeep with my uh, sister. And, um, but I loved the design and the simplicity um, of the Porsche since, you know, I got infected by cars and I was probably around 10 years old. I went to Boulder, Colorado for, for college and um, worked at a shop called Sports Image Racing. So now I thought I could buy my parts for cheap, so I started looking around for uh, a old Porsche and I ended up with a 1968 912. I thought, I have entered another world. And driving a 1953 military Jeep since high school all the way to college, this was a completely different experience about if you turn the wheel and actually something happened. With a Jeep, you turn the wheel 45 degrees and it starts leaning over to the left. And then that led to buying uh, the 1972 911S that uh, I still have in my collection today. So I started Griot's Garage in 1990 and the car was on, on my very first cover. Behind the car was this garage that, uh, you know, was Griot's Garage so to speak. It went outside the collection and then came back in. I don't know, it had another zero on the end of what I originally sold it for. So, but um, when I, when the car was delivered, this was in the ignition and um, I looked at it and all the bite marks on the key came from my puppy who raised my four children. And I just, I thought whatever I paid for the car, it was like it was nothing because the memories of that dog and um, being a part of that uh, were pretty special. So, you know, these are what cars do for me. They're very emotional for me. Um, I buy cars based on that emotion, that raw emotion. And uh, at the end of the day, you know, that car and certainly anything that Porsche produces, you know, gives me that emotion. I joined the PCA in 1981 when I first acquired the car and uh, down in San Diego I was involved in the PCA then and I really owe the, the start of my business and the success of the business to, to you know, members of the PCA so I'm very, very thankful. So the Maritime Blue uh, uh, RS is, uh, I've, got a, I've got a crazy friend that always calls me and he's finding these cars in Japan that apparently nobody else wants or whatever. And he calls me up and he goes, hey, there's a, there's a good deal on this car. Um, it needs a little uh, love on, on the paintwork. You're just the type of guy that could bring it back. So um, yeah, that's how I wound up with that. The, uh, uh, the 908, uh, racing has always been in my, in my blood as well. And I had an opportunity to, to buy that out of Portugal um, you know, during, the, during the recession. And then it, it took about three years to restore that car. And uh, so we had it uh, in Monterey, uh, you know, down for the, the uh, rent sport. Um, I was in second place on lap one and then looked in my mirror and Canapa and uh, was locking it up on the inside on the 917. And I just thought, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay out of this. I developed a brake problem, so I, I kept moving progressively back. But I was a hero for like one lap. I was in second place. So it was like really cool. A good friend of mine, Bruce Levin, uh, he, he uh, taught me a lot of things about business. He, he said, uh, Richard, there's first class and then there's jet money. Never confuse the two. He wants Sebring in a Porsche a couple times, maybe three times, I think. Uh, so that is his uh, 914. It was built by a gentleman uh, down in the uh, Oregon area. And uh, Bruce uh, had, had Bruce Canapa just you know, kind of refine it from there. And it is just... Uh, it's a beautiful car, just really, really stunning. And then the cup car, same, same thing, uh, you know, um, I'm obviously plugged into a lot of Porsche of nuts and uh, these things drop out of the tree every once in a while for me. And, and, uh, but pretty excited for that because it is uh, registered for the street. So it, it's a um, pretty thrilling car as well. When my first son was born, I have four children, three boys, and then Princess came along. Um, I put a copy of the Porsche Panorama 
right in the bassinet with him. So like, you know, he's got his pacifier and he's dreaming about cars and Porsches in, in particular uh, since, since day one. So uh, my first two sons are uh, uh, involved in the, in the car part of the family. Uh, so my, my son Nick has just, I mean, he's just as crazy as I am, maybe a little more so. Um, and, you know, we just love cars. We like anything that rolls on rubber. I just happen to have a certain place in my heart for Porsche. Well, I think I always just wanted to spend time around my dad and that generally involved cars at every corner. So when I was young, I would help him clean the cars by cleaning wheels. And that was obviously a major focus of his work life. Um, but it was also the thing he came home and he would go clean the cars and test some products. So I'd spend time around him there. And then in my teenage years, when I started driving, uh, we restored a car uh, and we did a 1971 Camaro that it was my dad and five of my best friends. And we pulled the engine out and took that car apart. That's how I spent time with him was just around cars. I get that question a lot. What do I do here? Uh, I tell a lot of people because it's the easiest answer that I'm the company yes man. If there is something that needs to be done that requires uh, an inordinate amount of energy and blind optimism, uh, that pretty much becomes my job. So uh, I've done everything from drive our events rig around the country. I got my class A CDL to drive that truck and trailer around. Uh, which was an awesome part of uh, my career here to get to know our customers and see the country as well. Now I do product development, especially for our hard goods, such as our hand tools. Uh, the USAG line of tools uh, was one of my big projects recently. I do all of our video work for our instructional videos, uh, but I, I would like to do almost everything and know everything about the company. So that's my goal. Um, you know, my dad doesn't have a foot out the door yet, but he always needs more help. So I'm here for that. I think there are good and bad days <laughs> working with my dad at Griot's Garage. Um, I think we both have the same core passion uh, that drives us to create great products for uh, our customers and obviously for ourselves in some capacity as well. You know, we don't want uh, somebody to get something that they would be unpleased with and, and really that, that kind of drives how we develop products. So, at the root of it, it's all the same. Uh, directionally, there are challenges every day. Uh, he started a catalog company and we now live in a digital world. And we talk about uh, the differences of opinion with regards to the future of the company all the time. Uh, that being said, we all want the best for it. And uh, we have a strong brand to stand upon because of all the work my dad did. Uh, and that's not lost on me. We have a insane project coming down the road and we're going to launch it in uh, uh, May, maybe April. That's going to set the world on its ear again. And we've been working on this for about two and a half years. And uh, the next great thing is going to, is going to come from Griot's Garage. I'm pretty, pretty convinced of that. Mm -hmm.